Hello everyone, welcome back to Morton's on the Move. I'm Tom, and today I'm gonna to be giving you an update about the refrigerator compressor retrofit that we did in our RV refrigerator six months ago. So six months ago, we replaced the internal components of this refrigerator. We replaced the absorption unit that ran on propane or an electric heater with a compressor. If you haven't seen the video about how and why we did that installation, I recommend you watch that first because today I'm just gonna be answering questions about the retrofit and how it's been performing over the past six months. The first question we get asked a lot is how loud is it? The previous unit was an absorption unit and they make hardly no sound at all, maybe a little gurgling here and there. The compressor does have a motor in it and it does spin that motor every time it needs to run the cooling cycle and you can hear it, but it's just not that loud. During the day when lots of stuff is going on, it's not even really noticeable. I'd say you can hear it kick on, but it's probably no louder than what a residential refrigerator sounds like. Our bed is about 10 feet away from the fridge and I'm an incredibly light sleeper and the fridge doesn't bother me in the least. Sometimes I can faintly hear it. It's a very low tone, so it's not obnoxious at all. The second most common question we get is how much power does it actually use? And in the previous video, we talked about a lot of the reason that we chose to go this way is because of its power efficiency. Compared to the previous unit running the absorption cycle on propane, this fridge uses a lot more power now. The absorption cycle uses almost zero power, but because we have a considerable solar system on our roof, about 1200 watts, we wanted to be able to power our refrigerator from the sun. Over the past six months, this fridge averages around four to 800 watt hours of power usage per day. I have seen that as high as around 1.2 kilowatt hours of power draw, but that was when the temperatures were well above 90 degrees. I think that our refrigerator, being as old as it is, is not insulating as well as it could be, and outside temperature swings definitely change the power consumption considerably. When we did the retrofit, we noticed that a few of the vacuum panels on the sides of the fridge were punctured, and the door seals may be a bit worn out as well, so that may contribute to some of the higher power consumption. Now one issue that we did have is that in those extremely hot temperatures, well above 90 degrees, that the fridge wasn't quite keeping up. It was starting to warm up a little bit and the fins were even starting to melt a little. The compressor was running full out, but it just wasn't quite able to keep up. That's where I made a slight modification. The compressor in this JC refrigeration unit is a variable speed, variable drive compressor. And that means that you can actually vary the speed of the motor. I got access to the manual for the compressor and I added a 2000 ohm potentiometer across the two terminals that allow you to adjust the speed of the motor with the potentiometer. I adjusted the motor speed up just a little bit and that has provided the additional cooling to keep our fridge a nice steady 40 degrees most of the time. Now in our previous video, I talked about running this refrigerator on 24 volts, but we've actually since switched back to running it on 12 volts because our 24 volt system actually operates down around 21 volts and even lowering the low voltage cutoff, the fridge shuts off too high of a voltage for us. So we've been running it on 12 volts and it's been working great. The biggest issue that we've had with this fridge and the new cooling unit is because the fins in the back of the fridge are so much colder than they were before, we were getting considerable icing on the fins. Now, most RV fridges are not really designed to be used full time, and that's probably why they don't provide airflow across the fins to keep them defrosted. In a residential refrigerator, air in the fridge blows across the condenser fins to keep them defrosted and transmit that cold air into the refrigerator cabinet. In the case of a lot of RV refrigerators, there isn't any airflow across those fins, and that's why the ice builds up. You can regularly pull the food out and defrost your fridge fins, or you can add a fan to keep it defrosted all the time. We reached out to the manufacturer of the cooling unit that we put in this fridge and asked if they had a fan kit, and they did. A fan kit for these fridges is a set of fans that sit in front of the fins and blow air across them all the time. This helps keep the fridge a nice steady temperature by circulating the air inside it across those fins and it also helps keep the fins defrosted. The fan unit that we got from JC Refrigeration was an RV cooling unit warehouse fan system, but they said that they were working on their own in-house fan system that should be available soon. The unit is very simple. It's just a set of three fans. 
The fans are controllable by switches, so you can select which fans or how many you want to run, and there's also a set of blue LEDs on it that can be switched on or off. I found the installation of the fan kit very easy. We started by removing the food from our fridge and putting it in a cooler. Then we defrosted our heavily frosty fins. We did this by shutting down the fridge and using a hair dryer on low to help melt the ice and pull it away from the fins. When defrosting your fridge, don't use too high a heat directly on the fins because you don't want to warp any of the metal because it's so cold and you're applying so much heat. But using it to melt the ice should be okay. Once defrosted, we test fit the fan unit to the fins to figure out which fins it needed to be attached to. This unit uses Velcro to attach itself to the fins, so you want to make sure to dry and clean the fins that you're going to be attaching the Velcro to. We then attach the Velcro to the appropriate fins and place the brackets that hold the fan units on the Velcro. From there we clipped the fan unit onto the brackets and began running the power leads. We envisioned adding fans when we put the cooling unit in, so we had pulled power leads at that time. You can tie into the power at the light in the fridge if it's easily available, or you can thread the power lead that comes with the cooling unit down through the drain tube that exits out the back of the refrigerator. We just hooked ours up to the control board power so that when the fridge is turned off, the fan unit will go off as well. And that's all there is to it. The fans come on when you flip the switches on, and you can also turn on the blue LED lights if you want to give your fridge a little pizzazz. The fans run in the fridge all the time, and while you think that might be kind of loud, you really can't hear them outside the fridge hardly at all. In fact, the fans are running directly behind me right now. Opening the fridge, you may be able to hear them, however. As you can hear, you can barely hear them when the door is shut. The fan upgrade has been fantastic. It has kept the fins defrosted as it's supposed to and also really helps keep the fridge a very uniform temperature. We noticed things on the door would get a little bit warmer than things further back in the fridge, but with the fans, it really keeps things on the door just as cold as everywhere else in the fridge. The last question we get asked a lot about our fridge is about the lighting inside it. The lighting is not standard. We added LED strips along the top and down one side on the fridge really when we first got this RV. The light bulb in this particular fridge was burned out and we couldn't even find the right one, so we just went ahead and added our own lights in there. And they're actually a lot better than what most fridges have. All we did was we took some LED strips and we glued them directly to the inside of the fridge and ran wires between them, connecting them to the switch that turns it on and off when the door is open or closed. These lights normally would need to be attached to a heat sink, but because they're in a cold environment and they're not on very often, they don't seem to be a problem. So overall, our fridge has been working great for us, but we have made quite a few modifications to bring it up to a full-time compatible and energy efficient fridge. The fridge has been operating almost exclusively on solar with the exception of a couple days since we installed it. Even when we're hooked up in an RV park as we are now, we don't charge our battery at all from the grid. We let the solar charge the battery and because this is a DC fridge, it runs off the solar all the time. If you're considering running a fridge on solar power as well, I would definitely consider stepping into a compressor unit that's much more efficient or possibly making a conversion like we did. It's been a little bit of work tweaking it to get it just right, but we've definitely enjoyed this conversion and would recommend it for somebody who's looking to run a RV fridge off solar power. As always, thank you so much for joining us here on Morton's On The Move. If you like this video, please hit that thumbs up button, hit that subscribe button if you're not following us already, and we'll see you all next time. <laughs> Bye.